take your calls right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I lived in a very regimented two-dimensional universe. I mean, it was a good universe, but it was very regimented and very limited. Now, imagine walking into a nightclub on Broadway in the winter and hearing this music live and what it did to you. If you can just imagine hearing it the first time you actually hear music like this live, or jazz music down at the Village Vanguard or the Village Gate. Same era that I listened to Lenny Bruce live as a kid, 17 years old. Couldn't believe what was coming out of his <clears throat> mind and mouth that anyone could even formulate ideas like that and speak so honestly. It was shocking to listen to. Now, speed it forward a number of decades. Here I am, Michael Savage, sitting in front of a microphone. I have a large audience, and I have a large audience in a lot of cities, thank God. And... I'm doing some of the same things that some of these people did. I'm doing it both verbally and I'm doing it, let's say, uh, spiritually or soulfully. And I'm doing it musically if I have to. Some days I'm flat. Some days I'm not flat. Some days I'm up. Some days I'm down. Some days I'm high. Some days I'm low. In other words, what you're getting, what you hear, is, what you hear is what you get, meaning what you get is what you get, meaning who I am is who I am. And so now let's go to the news for a minute. A minute. You turn on the news, do I have to criticize it? We know it's, fr it's fake. It's packaged garbage. It's recirculated nothing. Nobody wants to believe a word they say. So we used to have Fox News, then that suddenly, over the years, suddenly turned to the left and became nothing more than CNN with a slight twist of conservatism in order to keep your attention. Then you wake up and you see a fraud on there like this uh, guy on uh, Shepard Smith who is totally on the other side of the aisle and yet he's on Fox News, and he has an audience because he's stuck between semi-conservative uh, broadcasters. The man has no talent. And now you say, well, where do you turn for news? Do you know what I watch for news? If I tell you, you're not going to believe it. I'm addicted to RT. I'm, 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 I'm addicted to the RT channel. I watch it off and on all day long. Now, some of it's junk. Jesse Ventura is not watchable. You can't watch the guy. Uh, some of them are such the – anal the analysis is so good coming out of Europe and Russia – that let's say you know it's propaganda for Putin. Let's just start with that. If it's RT, you know it's got to be propaganda for Putin, right? So you start with that bias, and then you listen to the people as they lay out their ideas, such as they say, Turkey shot down the Russian plane over Syria. Even though the U.S. still won't admit it, they put out the initial propaganda that Turkey was defending its borders. We all know it's a lie. And yet many people who are otherwise semi-reputable bought that hook, line, and sinker. They bought Turkey's line, which means that they bought into ISIS's propaganda. So you watch that news and you see the actual trajectory of the plane. You realize that Turkey was trying to, just what I said to you last Wednesday before I went for the vacation, the four days that I was off. I said to you that this entire charade was orchestrated by Obama. He used Turkey as a factotum. He, he told them to pull the trigger. They were his button man. He is the godfather. He's the godfather of, of NATO. He hates Putin personally. He hates him politically. And so they said to Turkey, look for a, a reason to shoot down a Russian plane. They shoot down the Russian plane, hoping that Putin would react and therefore trigger NATO, NATO's involvement. Because unfortunately, Turkey is a member of North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which makes no sense whatsoever. It never should have been a member of NATO. The only reason it was made a, mem a member of NATO was to antagonize Russia. That's the only reason they were ever brought in. So you look at this, and you see Putin's certainly a 100 times smarter uh, than the former mayor of Istanbul, and certainly smarter than the community organizer from Chicago, no matter how powerful he is. And then you look at pictures of Putin meeting... Obama, the other day, when they both spoke in Paris about climate change, which is a joke unto itself at a time like this, and you see an odd picture. I put it up on Facebook. It's still there. It's a picture of Obama towering over Putin. Obama's giving him the hate face, trying to stare him down, but he's staring at the top of Putin's head. Putin's staring at Obama's uh, left shoulder, and what's intriguing is to look at the hands Putin is, has one hand on Obama's hand. He has one hand, let's, yeah. He's got his right hand on Obama's left hand, 
But more interestingly, Mr. Cool, Mr. Cool Obama has his left hand touching nothing, while Putin, the the martial artist, has a tight grip on Obama's elbow, pushing his elbow against Obama's body. This says everything you need to know. And what you don't know about Putin is that he's not just a black belt in judo, but he's a sixth dan, and also an eighth dan in karate. Do you know what that is? You know how high that is? It requires absolute skill, dedication, and concentration. The man also speaks Russian, German, and English. Obama's another phony, another empty suit, like Bush, who, if you watch them when a foreign speaker is speaking on the same podium with them, have you ever seen this? They look over at them to make it as though they understand what they're saying, and they, they kind of nod their heads like they know it. They don't know a word they're saying. Have you ever watched this? It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know they don't know a word the guy's saying. So he speaks one language. It's the language of, div of, div of divisiveness. And he's dealing with a man who's multilingual uh, and, and such, and also a very skilled judo player. So now let's go back to the shootdown. <laughs> Obama tells Turkey, pull the trigger on that, shoot them down on the border near uh, Turkey, and say, say that they violated your airspace, which is ludicrous to begin, to begin with, because every country violates every other country's airspace on a fairly regular basis. Turkey has violated Russia's airspace about 7,000 times. How many times have... We violated the airspace, for example, of Mexico. I'm giving you an example. Does Mexico launch F-16s to shoot down our planes? Of course they don't. There was no warning given to the Russians whatsoever. Okay, so what was the end game here? They wanted to drag NATO into this, but the, the judo expert didn't take the bait. Instead, he played it cool. And what he's done is he's moved troops, weapons, airplanes into the area he put up sam missile batteries on the border with syria and now a new report emerges today which is that he's building another air base in syria right in front of the eyes of the world he is building another air base in syria he's not going anywhere no matter what the thin man from chicago wants him to do he's not leaving syria the thin man from chicago doesn't get it yet he has bamboozled the American people and crushed the people. He's crushed the Supreme Court. He has crushed the non-existent Republican Party. But he can't crush Putin. It's the one nut left on the world stage that he wants to break. Do you get it? Now, what does it have to do with music? Everything and nothing. And so we'll go back to some of the calls. For those of you who are following it all, go ahead, follow it all. For those of you who think that I'm just speaking in tongues, I'm sorry to express to you the fact that I'm actually creating a cohesive discussion here that has music at the center of it. So let's begin with my obscure idea about soul being dead in America and soul music being dead in America. And the only thing left in uh, the American media landscape is hate and lust. The only thing that Weinstein and company, Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Spielberg can produce other than other childish fantasy, uh, albeit beautifully done, well-crafted, no soul whatsoever, all they can produce when they want to produce emotion is hate and lust. It's all that Sean Penn can produce, hate and pseudo-lust. It's all that the girls of Hollywood can produce, either hate or lust. None of them have any soul. And what does it have to do with politics? Well, you figure it out. And we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's take a call to Alan on WABC. Go ahead and make your point. Thank you. Hi. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm Alan. And listen, my point is this. The music that they got our, our youth listening to today, it keeps them brain dead. They want to be fat gangsters. They tr talk about women, that they're bees, and they have the women scantily clothed. There's no respect. And they're wondering why nobody respects them, and they can't get people to respect. When they don't respect themselves, how do they expect respect? All right, you made your point. Not what I wanted to hear. Kelly on WABC. Let's take a shot at Kelly. Kelly, what do you have to say about soul? Michael, thanks for putting a name on it. I've, I've experienced the same thing, and you almost feel like a stranger in a land that completely changed. I'm 49, and I feel the same way. You, you feel you're very different. I'm someone that sticks up for myself and others, and what passes for a decent person now is really just someone who sticks their head in the sand and doesn't have a legal record themselves. But as far as anybody being a hero or doing what's the right thing, you don't see it, and, uh, you know, people spend fortunes going out to see superhero movies where guys are in costumes. But the average person could be a hero in somebody's life if they would just take an interest in 
walk right away a little bit and stand up to someone, you know. And well, I think we're talking. Uh, you're talking more about hero than 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 soul. But yes, I agree with you. A hero to me is an emergency room doctor who gets a patient with gunshot wounds who's near death and, and has that patient survive, or a, a, an infant who comes in with an unknown disorder and the parents' hearts are broken because they fear they're going to lose the infant, and through some miracle of their brain and the technology of today, they save the infant. That's a hero to me. And I can go down the list. There are many heroes in America, but how often have you seen them glorified by, uh, by any of the media outlets? The answer is never. You don't, and people actually talk you out of doing it. I've had many people, I'm in my own little private thing, stick it up by myself against a big agency, and uh, people even advise you, they're well-meaning, but they basically say, just go along to get along. And, and you feel like, is it me? Am I wrong to think that I'm supposed to be doing something here? Who is supposed to do it if not me? You know, but I want Well, to that's right. It's, it's, it, all, it, all, it comes down to one person at any time. It's always the one person who's going to hold up the entire edifice. Thank you for that call. So now let's listen to the fraud of frauds in clip number one. Here he is again, and you got to hear him again. He's got a great voice with such hollowness in it that it resonates even as, in his own ears, I would think, in clip one. You know, just with respect to uh, my successor, let me first of all say that I'm anticipating a Democrat succeeding me. <laughs> I'm confident in the wisdom of the American people on that front. Of course, that has no meaning whatsoever. Now, the next one is a real screamer. This goes along with 97% of all scientists agree that global warming is caused by evil white males. Here he comes again in clip two with another big fat lie right out of, uh, right out of uh, shall I say, Lenny Reifenstahl's best films in clip two. And I would note that the American people... I think in the most recent survey, two-thirds of them said America should be a signatory to any agreement that emerges uh, that is actually addressing climate change in a serious way. So the good news right. is the politics inside the United States is changing as well. That's rubbish. Um, yeah, right. that, first of all, it's a CBS New York Times poll of 12 of their cousins inside a toilet somewhere. What are you talking about, the latest poll? I can run your poll showing that 97% of the people listening to me think you're full of you-know-what and that global warming is an invention by you and George Soros to rape the treasuries of all the Western nations. You know you're a liar. Don't quote false surveys. That's what I'm saying. It gets me angry. I hate lies. I hate it like poison. I hate it like poison to see the richest countries on earth run by some of the worst gangsters in history. Uh, pushing this lie in order to tax people to give them even more money. Do you know that I told you this in, in, on a, in a previous show? Remember after the um, Spanish and the Portuguese had colonized Central America, what they did to the Aztecs, how they destroyed the civilization, how they came there with the muskets and the armor, and what they did to the indigenous people because of their, in their quest for gold, and towards the end, when they had almost destroyed and eradicated both the civil, Aztec civilization, one of the elders of the people said, these Europeans have a disease. We call it the gold disease. It's incurable. It's still true today. You take a man like Tom Steyer, a billionaire. You take a man like George Soros, a multi-billionaire. There's no, money on, not a, no am amount of money on earth that's enough for them. And so these people are deeply in bed with the entire global warmest uh, complex. The global warming complex is one of the greatest gangster frauds ever, ever created by a group of very skillful liars who spend hundreds of millions of dollars a year putting out lie after lie after lie. And what's their end game? Do you think it's to save the earth? Do you think it's to save one mink whale from the hands of those greedy Japanese who are chopping up whales in the name of scientific research? No, my friends. It's to make even more billions because they also suffer from the same disease as the Portuguese and the Spanish suffered. It's called gold disease. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. We're going to talk about white student unions popping up around uh, the European world as a result of them being marginalized. And they say things such as... 
Well, there are clubs for everyone else. Why not white people? 